Hi everyone! In this video, we're going to look at the physics of an interesting little firework that I spent a lot of time when I was younger trying to figure out. I knew these fireworks by the name Speedballs, but upon rediscovering them a few years ago, I found that they're sold under a variety of names. When you light one of these little fireworks on a flat surface, they spin very fast, and then suddenly, unexpectedly for me, take off into the air without wings, or any obvious way to create vertical thrust. Let's start by lighting one of these on its side, as you're meant to, and watch what happens. This is a very short-lived firework, and everything happens so fast that, as a kid, I went through dozens of them trying to watch closely to see how they work. The fuse enters through the side of the tube, which is a feature that other types of ground bloom fireworks that do not fly also have in common. The off-center thrust from flame exiting the fuse hole causes the firework to spin, throwing out a large ring of sparks. There are also fireworks of this kind that are equipped with plastic or cardboard wings, which takes advantage of the rotation to provide lift like a helicopter. It's pretty easy to guess how these fly just by looking at them, but just to be sure our understanding is accurate, we can watch how one flies in slow motion. Speedball fireworks without wings must use a different method for flight, and there is one more clue. A nozzle on the end. In addition to flame exiting where the fuse passes into the tube, flame also exits through this nozzle. When I first experimented with these fireworks, I glued them to a board so I could watch where the flame came from during both the spinning and flying portion of their burn. This did not answer my questions at all. The flame from the nozzle is still exiting on the same apparent axis of rotation as the initial flame from the side of the tube. It's not facing downward, as you would expect it would have to be in order to create lift. One thing that I knew is that the ground played some effect in the flight of these fireworks, because if you throw these into the air, which you should not do, I only repeat it for the educational sake of the video, they often fly toward the ground or in any other random direction. If these are ignited on a flat surface, they almost always fly straight up. I did these experiments before I had a YouTube channel, and I certainly did not have a slow motion camera, so I was forced to come up with my own theories of how these worked without actually seeing it clearly. These were my assumptions. The tube starts spinning along the horizontal axis like this, caused by the flame exiting the side of the tube. Soon after, the flame burns through the core of the firework and also begins exiting the rear nozzle, which fights the initial rotation, and this instability forces the tube to tilt off-axis. So it starts moving the only direction it can, away from the ground, in a sort of looping corkscrewing motion. I thought this was how these fireworks flew, and I thought it was a good theory at the time. But when I rediscovered them and realized I now have a high-speed camera to see exactly how they work, I knew I had to try it. 
Before you watch the slow motion footage I captured, think about the design of these fireworks and see if you can figure out how they work for yourself. And then we'll take a look. I was totally wrong. These fireworks do not spin like the helicopter fireworks. They start that way on their side, but quickly stand on end so that when the flame breaks through the nozzle, it is facing the ground and easily launches the fireworks skyward. It's obvious now how these fireworks fly, but it raises a new question. How do they stand upright once they start spinning, and why is the nozzle side always the one that ends up facing the ground, except when they're thrown into the air? Here's my new theory. These fireworks obviously do not spin primarily around their horizontal axis like a ground bloom firework. They instead spin like this. When they're laying flat on the ground, some small amount of horizontal rotation occurs just as a side effect of the off-center exhaust, but most of the rotation is axial. The end of the tube opposite the fuse hole quickly becomes the primary point of contact with the ground, as exhaust from the other end causes too much wobbling and instability for it to stay in any one place for long. Once a consistent point of contact with the ground is established, the firework moves upright due to friction imparting force toward the most stable axis of rotation, which, as with any spinning top, is straight up. That was a mouthful of words, and every one of them might be wrong. I also considered that these fireworks may work less like a traditional top, and more like a tippy top. I thought I might be onto something with this idea, but I changed my mind. I've been wrong in thinking I had these fireworks figured out at least once before, so talk to me in the comments below. I'd love to hear your opinions. Many of you are much smarter than I am. Okay, so halfway through editing this video and watching the slow motion footage in more detail, I realize my new theory already needs revision. In some of my shots, there's obvious things besides friction that are clearly causing the fireworks to stand on end. Like in this shot where it stands upright almost immediately after the exhaust faces the flat surface. There's something called the ground effect, which causes more thrust to be generated by a rocket, in this case, when the nozzle is close to the ground rather than when it's facing open air. That by itself would force the tube upright in this scenario. However, I have other footage where the tube picks up quite a lot of rotational energy before it rights itself, in which case the ground effect thrust, which would normally cause a stationary tube to move upright, should instead be redirected by something called gyroscopic precession and cause horizontal rotation. For example, in this shot where the tube picks up a lot of rotational energy, but perfectly rights itself at the last second, just as the primary nozzle kicks in. In this case, I do think friction was how the tube managed to right itself, so I suspect multiple factors are at play. Maybe you're looking at these clips and thinking I'm a fool for missing what to you is obvious. Maybe these fireworks are completely intuitive in your mind. Leave me your comments below. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.